Well, it's all kicking off again. The war of words continued between the legendary Lennox Lewis and Anthony Joshua. But what's it all about, eh? Hey, what's been said? How did all the beef and the bitterness start? And most importantly, who is right and who is wrong? Let's get to the bottom of it, shall we? Stay rapping and ting. So yes, we love a bit of drama, don't we? And the absolute handbags between Lewis and Joshua has been a big talking point for a number of years now. But before we talk about the latest dig from the undisputed heavyweight champion, let's have a look how it all began, eh? Let's rewind back to 2012, a monumental year for Britain with the hosting of the Olympic Games. But more importantly, the year Fake Taxi was founded. Yes, that's right. So you're learning already, ain't ya? And let's be honest, both events don't really get the same credit did they? All the gold medalists, they received MBEs and awards, all this attention but the brave women who pay their taxi fares with a cheeky little bashing of the bishop, what did they get? Not a fucking sausage. Naff all fucking liberty anyway. So yes, of course Joshua was one of them gold medalists and he was over the moon to receive his medal in front of a boxing great old Lennox Lewis who picked up his own gold medal around 24 years prior. Joshua gave it the old, oh I'm your biggest fan Lennox bruv, I'm about to turn pro and I'd love a bit of cheeky advice and Lennox said, no problem, Joshy, me old son, come out to Jamaica and let's have a good old chat about it. We'll get you double sorted out. And Anthony said, yes, brilliant. I'll book me flight. I don't know about you, though. I personally would have said, can't we just have a chat here? Do I have to go all the way to Jamaica? It's fucking miles away. Do you know what I mean? Oh, there's a Weatherspoon's around the corner. Oh, I don't know. Whatever balls your kettle, bruv. Anyway, AJ made the trip. He knew he was in a strong position to land a blinding deal with a big promoter and he was taking his time looking for the very best option. Now, Lennox wasn't a promoter, but he offered his knowledge to the rising star in the form of a mentor to help guide his career. And when AJ arrived in Jamaica to discuss his future, according to Lennox's version of events, AJ accepted his help. Apparently, AJ said blind stuff, thank you very much, I'll give you a call when I get back to the UK. And when he got back to the UK, Lennox heard fuck all. So he took this as a bit of a disrespect and in the end AJ of course went off with Eddie and Matram and the pair never did end up making any more contact with each other. However, Eddie and AJ's version is slightly different, they say that Lennox actually wanted to sign him up but upon looking at the plans it weren't the route that Joshy Boy wanted to go down. So that was that. Someone's telling Polkies anyway. So then it was a quite few years after this between the two, but AJ clearly didn't have a beef ting with Lennox as he had some kind words to say before the Gary Cornish fight. And it's a title, like you mentioned, that Lennox Lewis won. Yeah. Is that something that inspires you? Ah, oh, 100%. And I remember when we turned pro, we always said we want to do the Commonwealth, British, European and so on. So now I've got a chance to make that a reality. So 100%, I'm looking forward to following in the footsteps of Lennox and so on. History has been written already, so you can kind of see the path I'm going down. So if I can do what he's done, I'm on, I'm on to a good thing. And then, as we know, Joshua had a phenomenal rise in the world of boxing, becoming heavyweight champion in just 16 fights, beating Charles Martin, who walked the earth like a fucking god. There he is out there. And anyway, it wasn't until that famous day at Wembley Stadium against Vladimir Klitschko that the pair would reunite once more. Sort of. Me and Holyfield were there actually uh, doing TV for German TV. We were outside the dressing room. Mm -hmm. We wanted to we wanted to big him up. We're there to congratulate him. Security brushed us out of the way and brushed him in there. He was like, Len, and gone. <laughs> they, like they pushed him in. <laughs> and then I'm like, Okay. Yeah, so it does seem a little bit strange two of the greatest heavyweights of all time being shooed away like this, but Lennox thinks he knows who the main culprit was. Who do you think orchestrated that? Oh, the promoter. Definitely the promoter. No, no, no doubt about that. Eddie. Yeah. Yes, old Frank Warren's best mate, Eduardo Hernio. Did he tell security to snub the two legends? Was he conscious of Lennox moving in? Something like that? Who knows? But anyway, Lenny Boy went, okay, I'll get the picture. He seemed a little bit salty about it, which gave way for a few more details to start getting thrown in here and there. Uh, float like a butterfly, he stings like a wasp, not a bee. Then only a year later, as the complete mess of an undisputed clash between Joshua and Wilder totally collapsed, Lennox gave his utmost praises for Fury and Wilder signing to face each other, but said AJ needed to start acting like a champion, in a way alluding to AJ potentially ducking the bronze bomber in favour of lesser opponents. 
No, I think uh, they should have a rematch. Anthony Joshua can wait. He doesn't want. He doesn't want any of those guys. However, he was working alongside PBC at the time, who Wilder was signed to. So maybe the Wilder bias was always going to be there, the same way that Eddie will always be somewhat biased to AJ. Regardless, though, later on Lennox fired some more shots after AJ's devastating loss to Cartman. He said that the AJ Rob McCracken duo was clearly not working, and they couldn't make adjustments for Ruiz. He summarised it by saying and you can't go to university with your third grade teacher. Yes. And well, you know, each to their own and that and far from me to challenge a boxing great, but up to that point, the AJ and McCracken partnership had won 22 fights with 21 knockouts to become unified champion. So clearly working with Rob from his GB days had been working pretty well. And Rob was more than established, having trained the likes of Carl Froch for a glittering career. But then again, a few fights later, you could say that in the first Usyk fight, their partnership was a bit of a problem. So yeah, that's a debatable one, isn't it? But this is when the two then hit the fan. In his first mainstream interview since the Ruiz loss, AJ broke his silence on the Lennox situation with the double lovely Anna Woolhouse. The likes of Lennox Lewis came back from massive losses. Lennox twice. is a clown. I don't respect Lennox. Oh yes, who can forget the famous clown comment which made headlines and brought the feud to a wider audience. We said, aye aye, it's all kicking off. We turned off fake taxi. We never did get to find out if Lusty Linda made it to that Hindu and instead we watched the interview. AJ clearly had enough of Lennox's attitude, but unfortunately for him, a lot of boxing fans felt his clown comment was a bit strong, potentially even out of order with the legacy the man had created. So he then clarified his comments in another interview. Why in specific do you think he, he's like a clown? Not for his boxing. When, it, when, we, when we talk about boxing, but I just feel like when it's come to me, it's kind of different. Anthony's dodging, Anthony's not this, he needs to do that. And I'm just saying, why, is it, why are you always coming attacking me? Rather than reaching out like Klitschko and giving a, a young man advice when I need it. Yes, so to be fair to AJ, he barely ever mentioned Lennox's name during the middle stages of his career, but Lennox was often chipping away at the British superstar. The question does have to be asked, why? Was there some bitterness there because he snubbed Lennox for Matchroom, or was there even some jealousy. Maybe Lennox, although an incredible boxer, felt he's never quite got the fame and attention in the UK that AJ has got since he spent most of his career on the other side of the pond. Or maybe he was worried for AJ taking his undisputed crown. Who knows? But it does have to be mentioned as well that with Tyson Fury's destruction of Wilder, Lennox was all praise for the new WBC heavyweight champion. Not a bad word to be said about the Gypsy King. You know, I never sleep on Tyson Fury. I've always said that, you know, he speaks from his heart and he always speaks the truth. And yet, during Tyson's rise to the top, Lennox has some choice words for him back then also, saying he's a loud mouth. He gets knocked down by cruiserweights. Who are you, my dog? will eat you for dinner and he will never accomplish what Klitschko accomplished. So yeah, there's a bit of a pattern emerging here with upcoming British heavyweights. But unlike AJ, Fury obviously replied straight away saying he's chinny. He lost to Journeyman. He's a bitch and he probably called him a sausage. He likes that one, doesn't he? Sausage. Again, though, Lewis at the time was mentoring David. Price, Fury's biggest rival at that stage, so maybe it was the old bias card once again. Anyway, back to AJ and of course the feud has started up all over again, ain't it? Upon the announcement of Joshua and Garnu, Lennox took to social media to launch an attack at young Edward. This time questioning if Joshua deserves a shot at the undisputed should he beat Ngarnu, saying maybe the winner of Parker Zhang is more deserving of the opportunity. And here we are. So yes, it's an interesting debate old Lenny's opened up here. Does Anthony Joshua, who comes off wins against Franklin, Hellanius, Wallin and potentially Ngarnu, deserve the shot? shot at boxing's biggest prize. Well, firstly, I'd love to know your thoughts in the old comments, and here's my pointless opinion on it. Yes, okay, he has got a point, because assuming he beats Ngannou, it's not the most attractive four-fight run to get a shot at the undisputed. However, to be fair to Joshy boy, if we rewind a few years after beating Klitschko, a world champion Parker, then he would have fought mandatory Pulev, but he pulled out for Takam, then beating former world champion Povetkin. You gotta say, to be fair, to him, he did deserve the shot of the Undisputed with that run back then. Which of course would have been against Wilder who held the very last belt, but he never got the chance to fight for it because of nothing less than the completely shitty, shady business of boxing. What should have been a very simple and very financially beneficial fight to make between two of the best in the world whilst Tyson was out of the picture, turned out to be the most frustrating load of total... Oh.
fucking bollocks ever. And judging by Wilder's lack of urgency to make the fight as well as turning down over 100 million from DAZN, it looks as though he never allowed Joshua the chance to take that undisputed crown. Fast forward to present day and does the winner of Zhang Parker deserve the chance? Well, personally, I don't really think so. Parker beat Wilder but ultimately Joshua beat Parker and Zhang beat Joe Joyce twice but prior to this, even though he may have been robbed, he lost to Hergovic. So what about Hergovic and Joshua then? Who is the rightful deserved challenger for the undisputed out of these two? Well, as much as AJ's last free fight run may not have been that emphatic, Hergovic's is equally a little bit ropey. He may have beat Zhang controversially and Dempsey McKean is an okay win but fuck me, what was the Mark Demori fight all about? That certainly ain't a qualifier for an undisputed fight. So yes, personally for me, the AJ body of work trumps Parker, Zhang and Hergovic and as I say, he probably should have already had the opportunity against Wilder. But it's all opinions and it, you know, there's no right or wrong, that's why we love a bit of boxing shit talk. Either way, against Lennox's wishes, should he beat Ngannou, AJ will have his long awaited crack at the whip. But yes, ultimately for these two, there's always going to be a bit of needle there for what Whatever reason, maybe it's jealousy, maybe it's disrespect, I don't know, but it gives us something to talk about, so fuck it. Keep it up, boys, we love to see it. See you soon, a uh, bosh.